Okay, so I've just uploaded, well, I'm in the process of uploading this long ass video uh, with this thumbnail, Radicalised Insurgents, part one. And the truth is that there are minds that are being radicalised with false beliefs by the sport of Formula One. There are uh, desire driven individuals that, like Max Verstappen, they want him to win and they believe and will argue for Max to be right in all circumstances. They can't acknowledge any failings um, and what is presented to them by the media validates all of that. What is illegal driving, what is unacceptable, what contravenes the rules of the sport? Well, the experts of the sport, they, they can only present to you that, oh, we don't, we're not even sure about what the rules are. We don't know. Um, is that acceptable or is not? Is that not? Uh, um, let's ask you. That That's the experts. In every other sport, the experts will tell you that's acceptable, that's not. This is what is allowed, this isn't. The presented experts of Formula One, the former Formula One drivers, oh, well, um, yeah, uh, this is just, it's because, it's because Max is a real racer. Yeah, Max is super aggressive. He's a real racer. That's what you're going to get from Max. That's not acceptable. But you like that, and that just fulfills your desires. And therefore, that conditions your beliefs. Now, there's a few documents that I want to go through to highlight this point, And that's what I'm going to do in this video, part two. Now, you can all do this, but most of you won't. Instead, you will tell me what you think in the comments section. OK, this is this applies to the strap on fanboy that thinks that they've got a valid opinion when they haven't. OK, there exists the FIA website on that website. You can go to all the documents that exist for the Formula One races for the seasons that they've got them here. We will go back to 2021 and see what the rules are in 2021. We've got radicalized strap on fanboys that believe that, oh, they changed the rules after 2021. Right. Um, to be, and it's, it was all different then. What Verstappen did back in 2021 was acceptable within the rules at the time, but now they've changed it and it's it's all different. Uh, so I'll take you to the Austrian Grand Prix and we'll go through some of the documents from the Austrian Grand Prix at 2021. Oh, in Austria, they've got the um, Styrian Grand Prix as well. So they've got two races at the Red Bull ring in 2021. Just another advantage Red Bull um, that the FIA grant. So... 20, 2021 Austrian Grand Prix, right? So this is a FIA official document, factual document, you'd say. Well, it, it's there. It's on their website. This is what actually happened. This is what the FIA actually did. OK, so the stewards, having received a report from the race director, considered the following matter and determined the following. Sergio Perez in a Red Bull Racing Honda forced another driver off the track right and it's the breach of appendix l chapter whatever okay decision five second time penalty two penalty points on his license meaning he has six points in a 12 month period the stewards reviewed video evidence at entry to turn four leclerc and perez were side by side then on exit perez was judged to not give leclerc enough room and leclerc was forced off track Competitors are reminded they have the right to appeal certain decisions of the stewards in accordance with it. And um, the people adjudicating were the great white hope himself, Derek Warwick there. Derek Warwick, the Abu Dhabi steward, adjudicated. So knows the notion of crowding another car off track. Knows that you penalise the person that crowds the other car off track with a penalty. Just five seconds in this case. Sometimes it's ten. But they've just given Sergio, because he drives for Red Bull, they've only given him five pen second penalty and two penalty points on his licence. Uh, this was at uh, 15.51. OK. Um, and, and that decision was made at 16.16. Next document. Next document. 16.22. The 15.58. 
What do we have here? Stewards have received a report from the race director and have considered the following matter and determined the following. Driver number 11, Sergio Perez driving for Red Bull Racing Honda. Uh, 1558, forced another driver off the track. Um, breach of appendix L, blah, blah, blah. Another five second penalty. Another two points now making it eight points in a 12 month period. OK, uh, the steward reviewed the evidence um, and determined that they were side by side and on the exit. Perez was judged not to give Leclerc enough room and Leclerc was forced off the track. Competitors are reminded they've got a right to appeal to certain decisions of the stewards. And same stewards, the great white hope Derek Warwick there knows that you give a driver a penalty for forcing somebody else off the track. We saw that season that at Imola, Max Verstappen forced Hamilton off the track. We saw that, did Hamilton force Verstappen off the track at, at Silverstone? Oh no, there were three and a half car widths to Verstappen's left. Verstappen wasn't forced anywhere, was he? No, that wasn't Hamilton's fault. That was Silverstone 2021. Spain, we saw a dive bomb forcing Hamilton to have to deviate his line. That was crowding him on the track. That's not acceptable. At Monza, prior to Verstappen ending up on Hamilton's head, there was an incident at the other chicane around that track where Max Verstappen forced Lewis Hamilton off the track. Brazil 2021, Max Verstappen forced Lewis Hamilton off the track. Saudi 2021, Max Verstappen forced Lewis Hamilton off the track. Turn one. Before the brake test where we should have got black flag for. Abu Dhabi, lap one, turn six. Max Verstappen forced Lewis Hamilton off the track. What penalties were applied to Max Verstappen? What penalties were applied to Max Verstappen. When it applies to Max Verstappen, uh, we call that let them race. And you think you're not radicalised. You, you didn't call Sergio Perez on Charles Leclerc, let them race, did you? But Max Verstappen's allowed to do it to Lewis Hamilton and that constitutes let them race. But you won't acknowledge double standards and the reason you won't acknowledge that is because you like it. You think that I like it, that's what I desire, so that's okay. That's who you are as individuals. That is a problem, that causes a problem in society. The media feeds you, the media enables you. That's toxic, that's a problem. We'll carry on with the documents though. Next one, what are we talking about here? What's this one? Stewards have received a report from the race director um, and have heard from the driver and team representative and considered the following matter and determined that Kimi Raikkonen caused a collision with car five in turn five. And he got a drive through penalty imposed after the race and two penalty points on his license. So uh, stewards heard from the driver of car seven, Raikkonen, and the driver of car five, Vettel, Team representative and reviewed video evidence. Uh, exiting turn five, Raikkonen closed the door on Vettel. OK, so you have to leave your other fellow competitor track space. You're not allowed to close the door on them, which caused a collision. <laughs> That's called crowding on the track. Yeah, so you, you can push your competitor on off the track. That's an offence. But if they're on the track and you go into the space that they're occupying, OK, that's called closing the door on them. That is what Verstappen did to Hamilton at Silverstone 2021. They gave Hamilton the penalty for that. They gave Hamilton a 10 second penalty and two points on his licence for what he did. For, 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 for the fact that Verstappen closed the door on him at Silverstone. Can you see that there's a problem? Most of us can, but the strap on radicalised fanboy can't. The radicalised insurgents that come to the comments section and claim, oh, that we're the ones with the problem. We're the ones with the British bias. You know, the team of British commentators that are all fluffing Max Verstappen, all trying to present that Max Verstappen is the best that we've ever seen. 
tried to justify his illegal driving, tried to justify effectively Max Verstappen as a boxer hitting his opponent below the belt and just describing that as being, oh, yeah, but he's a real boxer. He's a real man for doing that. No, he's not. He really isn't. He really isn't. But you like that. You think that validates you. That's what you like to see. You like to see your little bully boy get away with doing his little bully boy antics. If it happens to him, oh, you don't like that. But when he's doing it, you like that. But what's right and wrong in this world isn't down to what narcissistic little pricks like and don't like. OK, it's what those with integrity determine to be correct. And the reason it's determined to be correct is that when you reverse the situation, would it be acceptable for you to be on the receiving end of that type of conduct? And the trouble is with you strap on radicalised fanboys, you cannot admit that. You don't have the empathy to look at the situation from the perspective of the other person. You like it when you see your driver putting in the bullying moves. Yeah, I like that. That makes him a real man. OK, if somebody did that to him, to you, to your child, to your mum, to your dad, to your brother or sister, would you like that? No, it's a problem, isn't it? But you quite like it when you see Max Verstappen doing that to his opponents and you'll happily validate that. That's a problem, isn't it? That's your problem. That's your problem. Um, next. Next document. So what's this one now? Uh, 2021 Austrian Grand Prix, George Russell. What would constitute an offence back in 2021? Because apparently the rules have changed since then. Back in 2021, something that the FIA had to consider because it's a rule. OK, so therefore it's presented to the stewards as being this is a problem for you to determine what you're going to do about it. Um, the alleged moving under braking. <laughs> oh, no, that was just a new rule. They changed the rules after 2021. How come in 2021 that they was they were saying, oh, is he guilty of moving under braking? Oh, because that is a rule. That's a rule. OK, um, they decided to take no further action, having reviewed the footage. But there was a concern as he committed an offence, the offence being moving under braking. So, yeah, it was an offence back then, dickhead. The, you jumped up prick that wants to jump up in the comments section to tell me that I'm wrong. Here's the evidence of me being right, dickhead. Oh, but you don't have evidence. You don't have... That's what you want to tell me. You want to say, make a comment saying that I'm delusional. I'm the one that doesn't have evidence. You can make a comment saying that. You can make a comment saying cope. You can make a comment saying, oh, your butt hurt. That's all you've got. You've got your desires and your keyboard. You don't have any intelligence. You don't have any integrity. Nothing. You're nothing. You have a personality disorder. You're a toxic turd of a human being. Next one. Uh, 2024 Austrian Grand Prix. Let's have a look at this. Nico Hulkenberg. Infringement. Um, forcing another car off the track at turn three. 10 second point time penalty and two penalty points. OK, stewards reviewed video and in car footage. Driver of car 27 attempted an overtake on car 14 into turn three, but locked up and missed the apex. The car understeered to the very edge of the track. The car understeered to the very edge of the track, thereby preventing car 14 from turning in and forcing the other driver off the track. Right. That's the offence. Locked up, missed the apex, and the car understeered to the very edge of the track. You have not left the other car track room. That is the offence. You get a 10 second time penalty and two penalty points. Lando Norris forced Max Verstappen off the track at Austria 2024 by doing a dive bomb. That is an offence. That's a 10 second time penalty, two penalty points. We didn't see that. We didn't see that. Why not? 
inconsistency, isn't it? But how many times did Max Verstappen do that in 2021? The same regulations applied, forcing another car off the track. The FIA didn't impose the penalties. They didn't impose the penalties at Imola, at Monza, at Brazil, at Saudi, at Abu Dhabi. There's five times. No 10 second penalty or just five because it's Red Bull. No, no penalties. No two points on your license for doing that. Max Verstappen got away with that. That's 10 points that Max Verstappen got away with. They were the rules. They were the regulations. But the governing body of the sport didn't apply those rules to Max Verstappen. They make you think that it's OK. The sports commentators, the paid contracted broadcaster, Sky Sports F1, explains it to you to make you think that you are gaining knowledge. You're gaining information about the sport from these experts that are telling you about it. And they're oh. Is this okay or is it not? Um, Let me know what you think in the comment section. No, don't, because you don't know what you're talking about. I do. I'm showing you the documents. I'm showing you the parameters as to how they judge this and exposing that, yeah, this is what they do to everybody else. Just not Max Verstappen in 2021. Yeah, just not Max. We'll let Max get away with it, making you think that it's okay. And then when they do address the situation, the way they'll describe it is when Karun Chandok will go, oh, and uh, you can understand where let's compare these incidents between Lewis and Max and Max goes into the corner and he carries so much extra speed. Um, Was Nico Hulkenberg carrying so much extra speed, right? Locked up Missy Apex. Right. And it's understood, understood, understood because he carries so much extra. Sp- That's called a dive bomb and it's illegal. If you don't nail it, and Ricardo used to nail it, but Max can't because he's shit, right? And it's understeer, 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 and and Hamilton has to go off the track. That's the way Karun validates it to you boys. And you strap on fanboys go, oh, yeah, that's brilliant. That makes Max a, a real driver, a real racer. No, 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 it doesn't. No, it doesn't. That makes Max guilty of illegal driving that should get penalised and he is enabled. That's what the sport does, the governing body did and the presented media do to validate it. That's conditioning minds, that's radicalising your views, that's creating you. That's what it's done. That causes conflict, that causes the people that know that to be outrageous to be outraged and you like it. Who causes that dynamic? Who causes that toxicity? That's the sport. They want that. They want the war in the comment section. They want to divide people. They want the Orange Army to be at war with the rest of Formula One. They created that. That's the manufacturing of conflict for their benefit. I've done a video about this in the past. There's a James Bond film from the past. Go and watch it. Tomorrow Never Dies. It's where a media company creates conflicts so that it makes money. Crazy shit. You couldn't make it up, could you? You couldn't make it up. And no doubt that will attract the fanboys to come into the comments section and go, ha ha, this guy's crazy. He's comparing Formula One with a Bond film. Can you not see the cross-reference? Clearly, you won't be able to. Clearly, you don't have the mind to understand what's really going on here. No, but you'll want to come here to discredit me and try and undermine me and try to make out that I'm the crazy one. Yeah, that's right. That's what you try to do all of the time. Next one. What's going on here and where are we? We are at the 2024 Austrian Grand Prix. Stewards have received a report from the race director. Having considered the following, they determine that Max Verstappen of the Oracle Red Bull Racing uh, caused a collision between himself and car four at turn three. He got a 10 second penalty and two penalty points on his license. Did they review Max um, trying to then crowd Lando off the track when they've both got punctures. 
trying to is he trying to drive into Lando to prevent Lando finishing that race as well? Is he trying to push Lando off the track? Didn't see the um, the stewards reviewing that incident. So yeah, Verstappen got punished for that because he was in the wrong. The stewards at that event are Felix Holter of Abu Dhabi fame. The man that, along with the great white hope, um, Derek Warwick and Gary Connolly, determined that despite the safety car rules being what they were for the previous 198 Grand Prix uh, in Abu Dhabi, the 199th Grand Prix contested under those regulations where uh, lapped cars are required to unlap in a safety car situation, right, that were reintroduced back in 2012 at the start of the 2012 season and have been like that ever since. Those three stewards invited Red Bull into the valid Mercedes appeal and that's Red Bull. What Red Bull think in the comments section and Christian Horner, Jonathan Wheatley and Adrian Newey went into that appeal and presented a new version of the regulations where Halter, Warwick and Connolly went. Oh, incredible. Red Bull have got a new version of the rules and they sound absolutely right. And none of them are. Strange that. Why have you never heard that in, in the media? Why have you never heard the likes of Sky Sports or the BBC's Andrew Benson ever reveal that? You've never heard that because it's corrupt. It's toxic. It is contrived. It's called media corruption. The reason that I'm so passionate about this is because this isn't just about Formula One. That level of media corruption of misleading you lying to validate the agenda of corruption is happening in every facet of our lives. I live in the UK for the last 14 years of my life. My life has been blighted by corruption within UK government. My life has been made more difficult and is far less abundant, face far more challenges due to corruption that has enabled billionaires to become more wealthy and us citizens to face far more challenges in life. That's disgusting. This impacts all of our lives. Corruption enables that. Direct corruption takes place in the sport of Formula One. The media have enabled that. This is a clear example of that. The strap-on fanboy will jump up in the comment section for fight to fight for their favourite. They will go, ha ha, this guy is crazy. No, this guy is identifying clear wrongdoing using the example of formula one as a clear example of wrongdoing taking place media lying about it bought media being used as the tool to condition minds to condition acceptance to condition authenticity for wrongdoing this is corrupt this is criminal this is wrongdoing wake up wake up they cause war. They cause conflict. They cause people to fight with each other, to divert people's attention to fighting with each other rather than taking on the true corruption, which is the governing body and which is the owners of the show who are making billions. And all of those who are involved in the show, whose money has all increased due to participating in this corrupt show, being complicit with, with race fixing. They race fixed Abu Dhabi 2021. Nobody within the sport has called it out. All of the media has covered it up. They're all complicit with it. They all made a shit ton of money out of it. And it's a crime. And I'm the crazy one for saying so. Ha ha. Look at this guy. He's crazy. He's crazy. What's this one? 2021 Italian Grand Prix. Uh, oh, this this one, this one, um, oh, it involves Max Verstappen in 2021. We struggle to penalise Max, but sometimes you just can't get away with it. A three-place grid drop at the next event. Oh, don't worry about the three-place grid drop. All the other drivers, they'll just part like the Red Sea and get out of your way because Max isn't our race. We won't get in the way of Max because... We've learned to drive against Max. We've learned that if we drive against Max, he's just going to run his car into us. So we just 
Get out of the way. He's not our race. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two penalty points imposed on his licence for that one. Add them to the 10 points that he didn't get elsewhere. Uh, he didn't get anything for the black flag at Saudi. Uh, he didn't get anything for disobeying the directions given at the French Grand Prix, where he went off at Turn 1 and didn't rejoin the track correctly, which is, was also an offence worth penalty points. So we're, we're, we're accumulating these 12 penalty points, which results in a race ban, aren't we? Oh, no, but you don't like hearing that. You don't like hearing that. Nothing to see here. Anyway, uh, the stewards heard from the driver of car 33 and the driver of car 44. You know, they weren't able to um, just look at the footage and say, this is the problem. Oh, let's ask Max what he thinks. All right. Uh, thanks for that. Um, you know, they sometimes do. They sometimes don't. But it was clear to see from the footage. You don't really need to hear what they think. It's clear. You can see what happened. You can make a decision. You don't need their self-validating explanations. But they asked for them. And so they determined that car 33 was predominantly to blame. Not fully to blame, just predominantly to blame. You can't fully blame Max. You have to put some of the blame on Lewis, don't you? Yeah. Car 44 was exiting the pits. Car 33 was on the main straight. Oh, this is a lovely story. OK. At the 50 metre board, before turn one, car 44 was significantly ahead of car 33. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. The pit bit is just fluff. OK. Car 33 braked late and started to move alongside car 44. No, you have to yield at that point. You're well into the braking zone. You brake. You can see the on in onboard footage of those cars braking and down changing. You assess your position relative to that of your fellow competitor at that point and determine whether or not you have the right to that line around the corner. You, Max Verstappen, were behind. You have to tuck in behind. You don't have the right to that line. It's a chicane, which means it's a sharp right followed by a quick sharp left. There is not the room around there. Unless you are fully alongside, OK, you don't have the right to the track room around that first right-hander that enables you the inside line to the left-hander at that chicane. That's not the way that that chicane works. Unless you are fully alongside, if not slightly ahead, actually, going into that corner, you're not entitled to that. Because that, that car that enters the right-hander is going to immediately go to the left-hander. OK, you're not entitled to that track room if you're not in the right position. That's the way that this sport works. So. During the hearing, the driver of car 33 asserted that the cause of the incident was the driver of car 44 opening the steering after turn one. Well, yeah, because you go, it's a chicane, right? You go into turn one and then immediately, to the, you go into a right-hander and immediately then have got to go to a left-hander. It's a chicane. If you've not got the car, if you've got the right to that, and you've not got a car that you need to consider on your outside that's fully alongside you, you have the right to make that left move to the left hand turn two, the second part of that chicane. You have that right because you're ahead and the car behind you does not have the right to any space there. They've not achieved the position where you have to leave them trap room. That's the way this sport works. However, earlier in the race, at Monza, Hamilton had her earned that right at the other chicane. Hamilton was fully alongside Verstappen going into the first bend of that chicane, the first left-hander it was on that occasion of that chicane. At Imola, Hamilton was alongside. What did Verstappen do? Verstappen didn't leave him room. He just drove across the track. But Karun Chandok would tell you, oh, and Max carries so much extra speed, and it's understeer, 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 and goes all the way across to the other side of the track, and Hamilton has to leave the track. Right. But Hamilton had earned the right, because Hamilton was in the position where he'd earned the right. Max was behind. Max still gives it the send. And Max is validating himself. And you boys who don't know the rules, you think Max is right, because you want him to be right. Um, so Max is trying to, Point the finger at Lewis Hamilton, saying Lewis Hamilton's in the wrong. He opened the steering, apparently. Um, 
where we are. Where I've missed where we're at. Brake light. Start to move alongside car 44. Although at no point in the sequence does car 33 get any further forward than just behind the front wheel of car 44. Okay. Not alongside. Um, which is on, when you're on the outside, you kind of have to be on the outside. On the inside, you have to be more than halfway alongside. At the point in time where you've got to determine this action, Max is not even just behind the front wheel. This is well later into the bend where they're even, even that description is validating Max Verstappen. It's trying to make this situation sound better for Max than it truly was. So during the hearing, the driver of car 33 asserted that the cause of the incident was the driver of car 44 opened the steering after turn one and squeezing him into the apex of turn two. You shouldn't have been there, Max. That's the fact. You shouldn't have been there. You should have yielded. You had no right to go around the outside of turn one like that because you know that in a chicane situation like that, entering that chicane, you weren't halfway alongside and therefore the car that's in the lead has the right to take a tight right-hander followed by a tight left-hander. He doesn't have to leave you space because you've not earned the right to that space. That's the way it works in that situation. The driver of car 44 asserted that the driver of car 33 attempted to pass very late and should have given up the corner either by backing off sooner or by turning left behind the kerb. Exactly. Max Verstappen was fully to blame. Not predominantly to date blame, fully to blame. The stewards observed the CCTV footage that the driver of car 44 was driving an avoiding line. So Lewis Hamilton knew that that prick was still there, tried to still avoid him because that's what he had to do all season and yet Max Verstappen didn't never backed out never backed out oh he's he's a real racer no 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 back out they're the rules of the sport you're not allowed to hit them below the belt Max but your fans they like that yeah we like that whatever it takes whatever it takes as long as you win we don't care about rules as long as Max Verstappen wins that's all we care about desire driven individuals with no integrity no appreciation of the rules, no sense of what is right or what is wrong. Bastard people. Bastards. The world is populated by you. That is the problem. But rather than be the guiding influence for right, the media feeds you. They feed you for their corrupt agenda. They're making money out of it. Strange that. Strange that. The stewards observed on the CTG footage that the driver of car 44 was driving in an avoiding line, although his position caused car 33 to go onto the kerb. But further, the stewards observed that car 33 was not alongside, not at all alongside car 44 until significantly into the entry of turn one, which he should have backed out before then. In the opinion of the stewards, the manoeuvre was attempted too late for the car, driver of car 33 to have had the right to racing room. Whilst car 44 could have steered further from the kerb to avoid the incident, the stewards determined that uh, his position was reasonable and therefore fi find that the driver of car 33 was predominantly to blame. <sighs> so w look at that description. They're not clamping down on it, are they? They're still validating it. They're still giving some sort of, oh, tentatively... Uh, we're just saying that Max is predominantly to blame for that one. We can't fully pin this on him. We can't vilify Max. We don't want to upset the Orange Army saying that your favourite is totally in the wrong there. No, no. No, Lewis Hamilton could have gave him a bit more. No, no, he doesn't have to. That's not what the rules are. That boxer could have... Um, that boxer that got hit in the bollocks because... The other boxer punched him in the groin. Yeah, um, the boxer, um, he could have bent his knees a bit to make him a bit lower so that that punch would have caught him in the midriff rather than below the belt, couldn't he? Yeah, it, it was the boxer that got hit in the balls. It's his fault that he got hit in the balls because he, he could have he could have bent his knees and crouched down a bit, couldn't he? Is that what they'd do in boxing? Is that what the judges would do? Or would they deduct him two points and actually maybe... Disqualify him from the fight if he did it again. Is that what they'd do? Oh, yeah, that's what they'd do because that's what you do in authentic sport. Would the commentators be saying, that's disgusting, that's not acceptable, that 
is not within the rules of boxing to put in a low blow like that? Or would they would they go, oh, yeah, this guy's a real fighter, a real racer. That's what you want to see, isn't it? A real fighter that punches somebody in the balls. Real hard man, aren't they? Real hard man. <sighs> Next document. Uh, what's this one? The British Grand Prix. Uh, did we ask Lewis and Max to give each side of the story there? Did we ask Lewis and Max to give each other uh, each side of the story? Uh, no, they didn't need to do that. They, they were just able to review the footage and uh, didn't need to give Lewis Hamilton's opinion on this. Um, Lewis causing a collision with car 33 in turn nine. Um, Lewis Hamilton got a 10 second time penalty and two penalty points. The stewards reviewed video and telemetry evidence. Cars 33 and 44 entered turn nine with car 33 in the lead and car 44 slightly behind and on the inside. So he's on the inside and he's more than car half a car length ahead. Me, sorry, not oh, I said that wrong. He's more than car half a car length alongside Max Verstappen. At the braking zone to the, the corner, Lewis Hamilton had made himself almost alongside Max Verstappen. I would suggest that the nose cone of Lewis Hamilton's car was approximately 30 centimetres behind Max Verstappen. Those cars are almost alongside. Hamilton is on the inside. That gives Hamilton the right to the inside line around cops. That's the rules of engagement of the sport. OK, it's been described like this by the stewards. OK, car 44 slightly behind and on the inside. Doesn't tell you what the rules are. And that he has the right, does it? Car 44 was on a line that did not reach the apex of the corner. Are you mystic, Meg? Do you have a crystal ball to tell us whether that car was going to reach the apex of that corner? No. Where did the collision take place? The collision, Max Verstappen hit Lewis Hamilton's car before the curbing to that corner began. Max Verstappen drove his car into the space that Lewis Hamilton's car occupied before the curbing to that corner. Max's rear wheel hit Lewis Hamilton's front wheel, causing that front wheel to deviate, causing the steering angle to deviate, causing Lewis Hamilton to have to counter steer which in itself adjusted Lewis Hamilton's line. And then what you see some frames afterwards is Lewis Hamilton's car has drifted away from the midpoint of that corner, the apex of that corner, as a result of the impact where Max Verstappen converged his car across the line that Lewis Hamilton's car was on. Was Lewis Hamilton's car on a line that was a reasonable line to take around cops? It certainly looked like it. We never got to find out. We never got to find out because Lewis car, Lewis's car was impacted before that situation played out. But this is the governing body stewards, these former professional drivers, not able to identify that. The sport lying to you, not able to identify that. I prove it in my videos. I prove it in my videos. Who determined this? These, Nishetti, Dennis Dean, Loic, whatever his name is, Emmanuel Piro, former driver. Couldn't determine that. The Sky Pundits, former world champions, former racing drivers, all pin the blame on Lewis for this one. Oh, it's a racing incident, but I can't see how you can't give Lewis Hamilton a penalty for that. <sighs> Lewis was on a line that did not reach the apex of the corner. Well, that's. That's made up. You don't know that. Um, with room available on the inside, when car 33 turned into the corner, car 44 did not avoid contact and the left front of car 44 contacted the right rear. Now, Lewis, he was in a position off the track where he had the track limits, the white line of the track, on his right-hand side. Lewis's car was converging. It was getting closer to that white line. Lewis's car was being driven at an angle where it was converging with that line, getting closer to that line 
and looked like it would have met that white line as it went around that corner. That's what looked to be happening. Max had more than three car widths to his left on that track. Max wanted to go right. Max cut his car right. Max's car was converging to the white line on the right hand side of the track. Lewis Hamilton, the line of his car was already there. The rules of motor racing are if there is a car already there, you have to afford that car track space. You can't just run into it or force it off the track, force it to have to deviate its line. But that's what Max did. Max Verstappen launched his car into the space that Lewis Hamilton's car was travelling into. And his rear wheel hit Lewis Hamilton's front. That is what's happened. It's proven in my videos. The sports governing body can't identify that to you. Car 44 is judged predominantly at fault. 10 second penalty, two penalty points, Lewis Hamilton. Um, so we compare, we compare that, right? And we're talking here, the determination for awarding Lewis Hamilton 10 seconds and two penalty points is that um, that Lewis uh, was on a line that did not reach the apex of the corner. That's your reasoning for giving Hamilton a penalty. What's your reasoning for giving Verstappen a penalty in Austria 2024? Uh, let's get there. Is it this one? Max Verstappen. Car one was approaching turn three with car four alongside on, on his left. Before turning in, the driver of car one moved left. Did Lewis Hamilton move left? Or was Lewis Hamilton converging with the right side of the track? Oh, Lewis Hamilton was converging with the right side of the track, wasn't he? Uh, did Lando Norris have three car widths on his outside? No. Did... Was it was it was it Lando Norris's uh, responsibility to give Max the room, or was it Max's responsibility to give Lando the room? You know, Lewis Hamilton's on the inside of the track, and it's his responsibility to give Max room. Apparently, even though Max has got the room that his car is in plus three car widths to his left, but it's Lewis Hamilton's responsibility to give Max more room. Yeah, um, but uh, Austria. Lando is pinned up against the outer limit of the track and he's got three car widths to his inside and there's no mention of, oh, Max didn't leave Max uh, Lando room there. No, 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 no saying, oh, um, Max could have gin, given Lando more room, is it? Before turning in, car one moved to the left, causing the collision. The stewards determined that the driver of car one was predominantly at fault, predominantly at fault, yeah, and therefore imposed the above mentioned penalty in line with precedence. So spot the difference. Spot the difference. Um, are we talking about Max missing the apex? Check my video out. It shows you how close to the apex of that turn Max Verstappen got. Why didn't he meet the apex of that turn? Oh, that because the collision that happened before the corner deviated his line. Was there any mention about the missing the apex being the cause of the collision? No, there isn't, is there? Strange that. Why can't you identify it? Why is there no consistency? Oh, it's a strap-on validation. When people are fed lies, when people are fed misinformation, myths, truths, what it does, it convinces people of false information. It's dangerous. But this is what they do to the world. They don't want intelligent people. They just want thick, brainless consumers. That's all they want. Comedian George Carlin, YouTube him. He was saying this years ago. But the manufacturers of this society, they, they just get away with it. They want to generate this society of people with a 10 second attention span they're happy that you can only have the attention span to watch a, 
a 10 second Instagram little clip or a 10 second. In fact, even that is too long for you. You have to watch it on double speed. And if you don't, if you're not amused by it, you dismiss it. Oh, yeah, that's boring. Yeah, yeah, not interested in that. Not interested in that. Not interested. Oh, that's something I like. I like that. That's something I want. So that must be right. That must be valid. That's what it wants you to be. It wants you to have no integrity. It wants you to not hold these bastards to account. When you are conditioned to believe that, oh, yeah, we don't hold people to account. Oh, yeah, there is no consequence. These bastards that do this are able to get away with what they do. They're the ones that are making billions out of it without consequence. But you, you're living your best life. You're having a lovely time. You just come and pay us your £400 for a ticket to watch what we're going to manufacture for you to see. We're all winners, aren't we? We're all winners. But you can fight with each other if you're not happy about it. It's Lewis v Max, isn't it? You fight each other in the comments section. You have your little war. Well, we'll just enjoy ourselves on the islands that we buy and on our luxury yachts whilst we're laughing at you all. Enjoy the race, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the show. Thank you for your time.